Elliot Pillman, welcome. Uh, I'm Tony Whitmont. Uh, this is Booktopia. Uh, Elliot, congratulations on The Street Sweeper. It is a magnificent novel. Um, I'm very fortunate. I've read it not once but twice. You've made me cry not once but twice. Um, and when I was finishing it again last night, what occurred to me most was that it is really densely plotted. Um, and I wondered, what came first for you? Was it the theme, or was it the story, or was it the characters? Gee, that's a really good question. And now I have to cast my mind back and think of what the answer is. Um, a number of things happened, and I didn't know that they would all be put into the pot that would become the street sweeper. Um, things sort of pique your interest. And one of them was the situation I observed when I was living in New York, and for a time I lived across the street from uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Hospital. And I used to see people come, it's, you know, as, as you know, New York is a microcosm of the world, and this hospital, which takes up a city block, is a microcosm of New York. <clears throat> and so people come from all around the country, the world, to this hospital, and it's because it's a cancer hospital, um, they're often very stressed and anxious and agitated. And you'd see people spilling out onto the sidewalk. Um, sometimes patients would be brought down for a breath of, you know, fresh air or some kind of air. Um, visitors and the staff, and they'd all be milling around in a in a in a tight space. Sometimes they'd even chain smoke, you know, which is ironic. Um, and I, it, it, one of the questions that sort of arose to me because I used to catch the bus right outside the hospital was, since these people in a sense should never meet because they come from all different places at different races and ethnicities, what if under these circumstances an unlikely friendship were to blossom? And that was one of the, you know, in a, if I answered that question, I would be on my way and the beginning of the answer to that question is in part one between the characters Lamont and a patient in the hospital we will come to know as Mr. Mandelbrot, who's a Holocaust survivor. And in fact, that scene outside the hospital does sort of occur in the book at the end because it's kind of like the culmination of the book, isn't it? Sort of um, bookends. <laughs> The reason I ask the question is I know that you've studied sort of economics and economic history and I know that you've been a barrister um, and I also uh, know that as a child you read Solzhenitsyn's A Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich and there aren't many kids who would say that or would you fess up to it anyway. Um, but um, in our 10 terrifying questions recently you wrote that ultimately no matter how fortunate we are in life we ultimately just, we live alone and we live inside our own heads. And it made me wonder whether you approach your writing with a message, and if you do, how do you stop it being a polemic? And also, how do you stop it becoming a saga or cliché? Well, I hope I have avoided those traps, and there might be some people who think I haven't. Um, I don't start with the idea of a message, and I think it, it's dangerous to do that because you run the risk of alienating even people that agree with you because they feel you're hitting them over the head with a message. I think the story must come first. Just, it, you've always got to um, be working in the surface of the story because essentially um, whatever my um, moral aims and artistic aims, I have to entertain you and I might be uh, have the, the most you know, beautiful moral or um, ethical message but if I've lost you on page one, it's pointless. So I really try to uh, work in service of the story first. And in terms of the the ethics or morality behind the story, I don't know, I mean, I guess pretty clearly that they're my views, so they come out in the things I write. But, you know, sometimes I'd like to think I could write something that is just, you know, fun, frivolous, and there's humour in some of the books, I guess, you know, people say particularly three dollars has made them laugh. So I don't, I hope it doesn't feel sort of too sombre or um, weighty, but because I do hold these values, I guess they, 
they tend to come out. Um, I um, uh, wanted to ask you about the process of writing it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I sat down to tell a friend of mine the story of um, The Street Sweeper. I'm not going to uh, attempt to uh, tell the story here nor to ask you what the story is because it actually took about half an hour for me to explain to my friend all the fabulously interconnected intricacies of, of uh, your story. But it did occur to me to wonder about the process, your process of writing, because there's so much happening in the book. And uh, how did you keep it all separate in your head? And then how did you bring it all together? I, uh, and I don't know if this is because um, you know, I've got training as a lawyer or um, because I'm anal retentive, or maybe I'm a lawyer because I'm anal retentive. <laughs> um, but I tend to plot these things quite carefully and, and plan them. And I have little books that I make notes in. And sometimes the notes are you know, quite macro points, really the spine of the story, or the, to mix my metaphors, the, the architecture of the story. And sometimes they're tiny little points. You know, if I want to return to a certain scene later in the book, and um, it was raining heavily in that scene, I make a little note to remind myself, don't forget, it was raining. So there might need to be another mention of people avoiding puddles or something, I don't know. Um, but essentially, I feel much more comfortable if I know how it's going to end when I start writing it, because you run, I, I know you often hear, and I'm sure you've interviewed authors who say quite genuinely that they've created characters and before too long, the characters have taken over yes. and led them sort of by the ear and, and dictated where the story goes. Um, that must be a lot of fun. I couldn't do it, I'd be too anxious, because you spend years uh, trying to you know, craft these stories, and it's very possible, you might even say likely, that you get to a point where as satisfying as the characters are, and, and the story is, and you're really happy with everything, but the ending, you, you've got a, a handful of possible endings, and none of them satisfy you, and you've, for whatever reason, you're trapped. So I like to know how it's going to end first. Now, I think all my books have been like that. Maybe not the short stories, or maybe even some of the short stories, but the shorter short stories less so because they're allowed to be a glimpse, a snapshot. Yes. Yeah. So I had this, uh, this vision, or I had this vision of you sort of at home somewhere with a huge whiteboard and lots of arrows and sort of, uh, um, uh, sort of connections. Um, look, just one final question, and it's to do again with the themes, because there's such a richness of themes. Uh, you're, the book absolutely um, vibrates, I think, with humanity's cruelties and kindnesses. There's about, it's about the importance of witness, the power of detail, uh, the influence of our history, and, and how we're all interconnected. Are you done with these themes, or are they lifelong obsessions? Um, I, look, they're probably lifelong obsessions, but whether I give vent to them uh, next time, I don't know. But, yeah, look, the, the, the inalienable dignity of the individual is something that's very important to me. And somebody said to me that if you look right back at $3, in a sense, that's what they all have in common. And I was delighted to hear that. I hope that's true. but. Um, you know, it would be fun to write something frivolous or funny, but in terms of these values, well, they'll probably always stay with me. Elliot, um, we have to wrap it up, but I just wanted to congratulate you again. It's, reading the book was tremendously rewarding and enriching and redemptive, I think. So congratulations again, and thank you for talking to Booktopia. Absolutely my pleasure, Tony. Thank you.